I am uh, Purvi Mehta and um, I joined Ilri in January 2009. Um, I have a crop, uh, come from a crop background and actually was trained as a crop uh, agriculture biotechnologist and then went into the whole area of capacity development. So before joining uh, Ilri, I was the director of an NGO in India which worked with a very large number of ministries and uh, had members who were uh, 68,000 farmers um, uh, in several states of India. Uh, basically, it worked on technology transfer and capacity development. So I came from that kind of background and uh, worked with IFPRI for three years, uh, again, doing similar things, building capacities um, and trying to take uh, biotech crops closer to the farmer uh, kind of work and then uh, came to Ilri to, uh, to work with the Capacity Development Unit uh, about three years ago. But one of the historical things that has happened and one of the historical contributions of this institute uh, has been its investment in capacity development. I mean, in the last three years, I've come across uh, ministers in Africa, uh, university deans, university teachers, researchers, people at the National Agriculture Research Systems all over Africa who have said that they have a soft corner. You go to, it's, it's funny, you go to a conference and they see the Ilri badger when you're speaking, you, they see Ilri there and they, they want to come talk to you, uh, especially because they have a soft corner for, for Ilri and uh, a large number of people I've, I've come across in Africa, uh, which in a way is a new region for me, um, who have come up, come up and said, you know, they, they know Ilri because they've been trained at, as Ilri. They have been graduate fellows at Ilri, or they have been uh, had they've had soft, uh, I mean, uh, short uh, trainings at Ilri. So uh, you know, this is a huge investment. So when when we say investment in capacity development, I think we 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 often don't realize the kind of impact we have created by running this kind of a program, by creating that kind of pool of expertise in the region. Um, I, I feel that uh, investment in capacity development is not only investment into future generation, but also our investment into sustainability. Because, frankly speaking, projects come and go, but the kind of capacities it builds in the regions, whether it is Africa or Asia or any regions, uh, you know, those capacities uh, stay on the ground those capacity have a long impact and they, they don't get limited to those people but then they spread across. So I see them as uh, ambassadors of Ilri but also ambassadors of the livestock agenda uh, per se. Many CG centers and I've been associated with several, many CG centers we talk about capacity development, we talk about impact, we talk about you know having that sustained effect on the ground but I think one of the best pathways towards these things is to rather than sort of um, importing capacities from outside uh, to build our own capacities and that's only by building capacities of the regional people so that they can take the message forward rather than people like me coming from other regions and, and trying to trying to do work. When we say capacity development at ILRI or when we say the CAST or the Capacity Strengthening Unit, we are talking about two things. One is the whole uh, area of graduate fellowship program. Uh, if we look at our two major campuses, uh, Addis Ababa and Nairobi, we have uh, on an average 43 students every year joining us for their PhD and MSc program. Some stay with us for three to four years while they're, they're doing their PhD. Some could be very short term, uh, eight months, one year uh, kind of students. But these students basically are our links with the various universities. So if we, if we look at the links that we have with the universities, we are at the moment in, um, in uh, sort of collaboration or relationships with 39 universities across the world. 
Yeah, and these students come and uh, come and work with us uh, for a, for a long period of time. Interestingly, a lot of these students then decide to stay with us for a longer time. For example, Steve Stoll decided, came as a graduate fellow and decided to stay with us. Delia Grace stayed with us. Rob Skilton, and there are many many such students. So it is not only our investment into the region, but I think it is our investment into our own human resource as well uh, uh, and, and our, our uh, you know getting good scientists and leaders uh, uh, for the future. Something that I'm really very proud of is the gender balance in these students. At the moment in Nairobi it is exactly 50-50. We have 50 percent uh, men and 50 percent uh, women uh, graduate fellows working uh, uh, working with us in Nairobi, so that that's that's pretty good. We have, we are one of the largest graduate fellowship programs in the CGIAR. This is only when I'm counting Addis Ababa and Nairobi. We have a large number of students who are also based in Asia, and these numbers are definitely growing. Um, the second part of the capacity strengthening is this whole area of how do we take the research outputs. To developmental outcomes. Over 80% of our donors or people who invest money into institutions like ILRI are developmental donors, people who want to see developmental impact, people who are interested not only, for example, in developing a vaccine, but interested that that vaccine reaches out to the farmer or, or creates that developmental impact. And that's another area where uh, capacity strengthening comes into picture. How do we take the research outputs, how do we extend it uh, to the larger community? It could be communities of farmer, it could be community of the National Agriculture Research System, universities, and all these uh, boundary partners who work between, who are uh, present between us and the end user, which could be the farmer. Um, uh, and how do we build capacities of that. Um, we are associated with a very large number of ongoing programs at ILRI, uh, not only in uh, Africa but uh, quite a few in Southeast Asia, South Asia, uh, where we are trying to take the messages that comes out of the research and then sort of translate them into uh, the messages at the grassroots level. Uh, this this uh, includes conducting training of tr training of trainers programs, uh, building uh, training manuals, doing some face-to-face -face training. But then I think we need to go beyond that and uh, get into the new areas like distance learning program, putting Ilri's messages through the various ICT programs. Uh, something I'd love to see maybe in next five years at Hillary is when you know these large number of mobile phone networks for example that are now reaching out you know there is a, it's a it's a well uh, well oiled machine now where health messages and um, uh, seeds and the messages on seeds or the messages on agriculture especially crop marketing is reaching out to the farmers in many many countries um, in five years time i would love to see if when ilri's messages are translated through those uh, through those systems and through uh, those those channels and we reach out to the people in five years time i'd love to see more ilri material turned into local vernacular languages so that not only the research community uh, understands what we do but also the farmers and people at the grassroots level um, see it and interestingly you know i my experience says that even policymakers learn much more by reading out the material that's meant for farmers than uh, than the material that's meant for researchers, for example. So, translating Ilri's messages to various policy uh, policy decisions, um, translating Ilri's message to various developmental impact is something that uh, I'd like to see in the next five years.